Yo, 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 yo. You already know your boy Fish Baby back in the building. Come and drop another video for you, peeps. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm just tripping. At the crib, looking at these charts, you know, on the other intro I had made before right before this right here, I had dropped a little float. But I had deleted, you know, because people were sensitive out there. So, you know, uh, what I'm going to start doing, I'm going to just start coming in live and in charge, you know, just be busting out raps. But I can't rap for shit. So it would be straight off the dome. I ain't writing nothing down. I'm just going to let it breathe. And how you catch it, how you going to get it, you feel me? You feel me? No, I'm just here we go with the charts though. Starting off with the DXY. Oh, uh, with the DXY, with the DXY. What we got is on the weekly time frame, we bullish. Uh, last week, price action just pushed into a supply zone before market closed. So be careful of a bigger reaction to the downside. <clears throat> um, Before we continue, what um I was thinking about as I was doing my compare and contrast video before this one, for the most part, me dropping these videos is just kind of trying to show you how I mark up, how I read the market, how I analyze the market, how I get active and how I get busy in this bitch. Um, so when you, in turn, as the viewer, come to view this video, you know, what I kind of expect or what my thought process and mind frame is that you look at this video, see how I marked it up, go back to your chart, see if it compares and contrasts to the way you marked up, you know, see if it, it gives you a little insight on how you can get active. I don't necessarily call or want you to change your charts to be like my style because you may look at my style and like, nigga, that shit look confusing for, I don't know what going on with that right now. And there's a lot of traders out there that I still watch. I look at it and I just be clicking on YouTube and be like, bro, I don't know what the hell you talking about, bro. But if you eating off of it, it makes sense to you. It got to make sense to me. It didn't even make sense to you because it's in your pockets. So when I continue to go over these videos, um, if the zones don't make sense, drop a comment. If the lines don't make sense, drop a comment. If the weekend analysis ain't playing out for you, the way they play out for me, drop a comment. I'm always down to learn. I'm always down to change. I'm always down to get get busy and get money with somebody else. I'm always, you know, I'm, I'm not closed minded at all. Uh, if somebody say they got a better way and they willing to show that better way and they look good and they look greasy to me, then I might get greasy with you. You figure, do me? Um, so for the most part, yeah, this is how I analyze. This is how I get active. This is how I get busy. And if I was able to trade the New York uh, more consistently or the London more consistently, I feel like my profits would be a lot higher. But right now, that ain't the case. I'm on the Asian. I trade the Asian. That's the name of the show. Let's get to it. Okay. So, uh, like we said, best on the weekly. Price section did push into a demand or a supply zone. I think I got an outline. I thought I did. Um, but I, I must have deleted. Oh, that's because you got a chart blank. My bad, y'all. Um, still can't see it. That must have been on a different part. But yeah, okay. So go back to the voyage and refresh everything. And then we can leave it like this. Mm -hmm. Cool. So weekly bullish last week price action uh price action pushed into a supply zone before market close. So right up here, supply zone is back to the left that way. Um so be careful with bigger um retracement. And when I say it, why I say that is because I could see price action, you know, being big bully come down, give you a bully candle back into that zone that melt all the way to flip back down here where it just broke from. And even continue retesting, and then come back all the way down here before getting back added to the upside. So um, just be careful. Um, watch out how the market's moving. Um, don't be, uh, like a lot of people say, don't get don't get stuck to just one bias. The market is extremely bullish right now. I think a lot of it has to do with what's going on in the world right now. Um, but for the most part, we what we try to do is come here and read the price action, uh, read the technicals. Um, and yeah, just go from there. I know it's called technical analysis and some other kind of analysis. I can't think of that same name, but I don't be keeping up all that extra shit. I just read the charts. Um, fundamental, there we go. Fundamental analysis, technical analysis. Um, and we try to make the best decisions for ourselves, for our charts, and for our accounts. Um, based off the daily, <clears throat> based off the way the week ended, the bullish continuation zone isn't marked up the best way due to no bearish print. On a daily, on a daily chart, what I like to do is wait for some type of retracement. As you can see, price action just pushed up and then they closed. Usually, sometimes you can catch a bearish print at the end of the week and uh, kind of get that um, 
I get that zone marked up a lot better, more clear. Um, without that bearish print, price action could just um, wick down a little bit and then continue to just keep pushing bullish in there. My daily continuation zone is automatically broken. Um, I think it still kind of works the same way. Um, it's not been too many week where the market closing that didn't have that bearish print, so that's why I'm kind of, you know, pointing it out now. Um, I still would be looking for a break and a retest based off of this zone right here. So if it just opens up bullishly, you know, um, I'll wait for some type of exhaustion back into this level at 98.92 and try to get active back to the old side, all the way up to the Hondas, to the Hondo threes. You know what I'm saying? To the Honda. Get out there and see what's going, what's going, what's going, uh, what's going to take place. Um, let's see what we got here. Going to the 4H. 4H is creating higher highs and higher lows because price action is, uh, because price action is coming from creating a higher high. I would like to see creation of a higher low and a strong support area. Uh, the first support area I'll be looking for price action to slow down or re retrace to is this recently most um, most recently broken area right here when price action was pushing up, fell to break up, break up, break back in. So it's pretty much a fake out. So I kind of go back to this candle, candle uh, ran to resistance here. And I kind of just uh, mentally delete those two candles of price action and then the candle just, uh, price action just fell down from there. Came back to retrace it here, stalled out there. Came back here, stalled out here, stalled out, dropped again. Finally pushed up through, finally broke above, closed above, came back to retest SR flip and then got back up out of there to the top side. So um, <clears throat> I would consider this the first level um, that I'll be looking for for support to be formulated and then possibly try to take buys to retest the highs. Uh, if not, then price action could come all the way back down and then just be bearish for the whole week and then possibly retest the lows that send us into the highs way back over in here. So um, be careful with that. You know, if you don't see the candle, the candle, um, if you don't see the candle pattern, the, the candlestick patterns formulating in this area or around this zone, anywhere up in here properly, if you just get big bearish and go from candles, Marabusa candles, uh, any of them type big ass candles, Pushing into that zone and close blood zone, yeah, you probably ain't want to take the short from right there. You probably want to wait and see um, where it finally finds some type of support, how it reacts from that support, and then potentially how it pulls away from that support if we're going to continue bullish. But one hour still continuing bullish sentiment, stay off the 15 minute time frame and down until the one hour and the four hour lines up. A lot of, uh, you know, when I did my mental review of last week, I found out that a lot of my trades, my, my unsuccessful trades were due to me staying on the 15, staying on the five, staying on the 30, not going back to the higher time frame and seeing how those candles were actually um, form, creating, uh, creating formations, not seeing how they were actually closing, not seeing that the zones that they were closing, I was taking it all based off the 15, I got in tunnel vision and I just knew what was gonna happen and it didn't happen that way. And I got my ass cold. You ever um smell burnt popcorn? That's how my trading plan was like last week. Smell of that burnt popcorn. It just makes you like, oh, get that oh look on your face. You're like, oh, what the fuck is that? Too not a what the fuck is that? You know, I wish I could play music on it. I gotta give me hey yo, shout out to any on um, sound man. Y'all know some sound man, some video editing recording mans out there. I need one. Tell them how let your boy cut on. I need some sound effects in the background of this. You feel me? You feel me? No, I'm just kidding. Hike up on Mountain Dew. Oh, pushing over to uh, UJ. What I saw on UJ for the most part on the, let's go with the daily time frame. All right. I won't blank it because I need you to see these areas that got highlighted. Um, If you just, uh, kind of go back in price action a little bit and just kind of trail the uh, price action, you kind of got a high. Um, higher low, higher high, kind of looks like an equal low with a new higher high, higher low, um, actually a lower high right over here. Um, and then a failure to shift the structure to confirm that lower high. So pretty much still in the uptrend, uh, current price action currently consolidating. Um, currently consolidating. So for the most part on a weekly, we consolidating slash bearish. Uh, and I say mostly bearish because, you know, we got the high uh, potential, higher low with no new high. Um, usually when you see a higher low with no new high, you kind of bullish um, sentiment starting to exhaust. But like I said before, um, we failed to shift the structure. We we um, we kind of broke intraday time frame structure right here, but we failed to confirm a shift of structure. Now, if you're taking it as this is the high, this is the low, 
potential lower highs right here, based, double top based off of structure looking left, we could get active and break through this bearish continuation zone at 114, 157 this week. And then, you know, get proper. And then we definitely could identify that, hey, um, you just getting ready to go bearish. But as of right now, it's all speculation. It's all thought process. It's all psychology. We haven't got any indications of that just yet. The only indication we got right now is that we are in a state of consolidation on the daily chart. <clears throat> Um, pushing to supply, looking left, and failed to create new highs. Um, looked like there's a wick to fill, looking left, and flat lows. Okay, so this looks like a wick. Uh, right here, looks like he's already filled, so I don't know what I was looking at. But that's all the weekly chart. Hold on one second, I got the sneeze. I had a sneeze. All right, there we go. Oh, let's see, of the weekly. Uh, let's see if we can find that weekly feel. Blank all that. Um, I don't know what I was identifying, but I do see these flat lows here. Uh, maybe I was talking about this week. Maybe I saw something when I was analyzing earlier. But um, so it could be, you know, because that week still would have been. Yeah, but um, if nothing else, I do see the flat lows. Um, the liquidity starting to build. Um, Down to the daily, down to the four. Refresh, let's get the information back over. Four hours consolidating because the four hour is consolidated, won't analyze lower than this time frame, just wait for the breakout. So, you know, um, this was a little downtrend uh, three weeks ago. Um, we had, after the downtrend, we had the breakup structure. So one thing I look for, or, you know, some confirmation to see if price has turned around or is just pump faking. Um, I always try to identify my breaks of structure, um, whether it's bullishly or bearishly. Um, I got a break of structure there. What I use next for is what I, what I consider next is the shift of structure. So the break of structure, you obviously see price action closing above. If, you know, we break a structure to the upside, price action closing above the previous lower high, which is right here. <laughs> And even if you don't like this one as your lower high, cause you don't really call it a clear new lower low, you can do this one, price still close above that area. Um, the shift in structure, the shift of structure then comes into play to say, okay, we broke structure, we came, we pulled back, we gave you a higher low and then we pushed higher. Only thing in this scenario, no new high. So mm -hmm. if we, if this price section um, right here would have gave a new high, then I would consider that a shift in structure. And then I would have said, okay, I'm looking for the buys, but uh, that ain't happened. We started at the high over here and then melted immediately. Um, so consolidating uh, UJ 4H chart down. Um, if you want to scalp it, it'd be a little risky right now. We're in a bearish trend on the lower time frames. Uh, Entry day time frame. What I would do with this <clears throat> because of this big ass impulse here, wait for at least a fifty percent or the area most recently broken, which is probably about in the same spot. So um, fifty percent retracement for the most part, then probably try to take it back down. But called this out on the DXY a couple of weeks ago. We've seen the same type of scenario. Um, the chart was inverse though. DXY closed to the top, melted, and then got back active to the top side. So <clears throat> this right here, um, closing to the downside, um, from, from, from experience based only, I would expect this to come back to the top, fake out the buyers, and then melt and go back down. We are gonna see how that play out. So remember you heard it here first, three, six, 22, for your boy, Professor P, we're going to see if UJ drops and melts from the uh, from price point is at right now, 114.828. Over to GJ, my baby mama right here. Me and GJ going to get naked later. Um, Going back to the 4-H. <coughs> uh, let's see what we got. Weekly, uh, bearish looks like it's going to retest the demand zone that pushed into the highs or to liquidate 149.200 level. <coughs> We'll jump out at 149. We got a liquidity pool down there. Uh, we either coming back to, to retest this demand right here that puts us into the highs, or we come back to this liquidity pool. All these people stop losses down here chilling. They think they safe. They think they ain't gonna get smacked. But me and my boys, we see y'all. You know, we see y'all. And then, but if price action actually closed below this level, um, that's a nice, nice range for prices to just melt all the way back down. And then, like I said, with things going on overseas, um, JPY being a safe haven, the uh, U.S. dollar being a safe haven, um, that could potentially happen. You know, I don't, you know, I don't think it'll melt all this week coming up. But you know, 
as going one, two weeks, three weeks away from now, you know, that potentially could be the play, could be the move, could flip your count, could change your life um, <clears throat> on a daily. <clears throat> Do you want to see either level most recently broken turn resistance or 50% retracement? Um, so as far as our re retracements, go down to the four hour, you can see a little bit better. <clears throat> as far as retracements, is price pulling back when market opens? Looking for price to respect here first. <clears throat> Start throwing some uh, rejection wicks, so you know. I don't know. I guess anything else besides the rejection wick, um, big bearish and go from candle here. Um, I would look to retest the lows right here. Um, if this level just breaks immediately through, or we gap like we did last week. Why is this space right there? Hmm. That's why I'm looking. If we gap like we did last week and the price open up here and then touch there and then melt, I would take a short from right here as well um, to retest the arm um, lows. That's pretty much it on UJ. All right, DJ. I thought I had one more note on this. Here we go. Um, 4H, lower lows, lower highs. Wait for the lower high formation just to create a new low. So trading, trading cycle, trading plan. Or trading within the trading cycle, you got the high, low. Lower high, lower low, equal high, lower low. So naturally within the lower high, lower low format of a bearish trend, we just created a lower low, should be looking for a lower high. This could be our area number one. This could be our area number two. If both of those get broken, uh, readjust, replan, um, reset up. Next play. Um, GU. <clears throat> I haven't traded GU in a while. I have been marking it up every week. I don't know why. Um, you know, at one point in time, I was catching some good moves on GU. I was flowing with it, but then it just started consolidating. You know, it had a good short, uh, good, good bearish trend here, good bullish trend there, but... <clears throat> I started doing this right here, and I was like, you know what? You know what? You about to get your ass left. So I peeled out on GU for the most part. I ain't catch none of these moves. You know what I'm saying? It's just been dropping, dropping, dropping. But for the most part, we got area resistance up here, area support right here. Um, price kind of gave you like a little triple top action right there, and then it just melted and breaking the previous level of support. Um, <clears throat> first area I would look forward to come back to is right here between – 132, 724, uh, 133 even. Try to find some exhaustion candles back into that area, um, get active. If not, potentially back up into this area right here. Um, looks like a little water block type deal on the uh, 4H. That's uh, probably look like at a 50% mark um, of the impulse move that sent us into the lows. So weekly bearish currently pushing to a strong support area. Daily bearish, if you don't, Gap to the downside, expect retracement. Uh, just created a new low. Forage is bearish, creating lower lows and lower highs. Want to see how price action reacts here first, then adjust. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do, you know, like I said last week, I did the, um, I, I stopped trading like Wednesday. I took my last trade and I was like, um, I got to figure out what's going on. So what I'm trying to do this week is put more notes on the charts to where I don't forget what my trading plan was. Cause I mean, normally I mentally come up with a trading plan. I find out my trend, find out my direction, see where prices is wanting to go based off of the higher time frames, And then I go and trade the lower time frames and <clears throat> get active that way. But <clears throat> what I've seen with the way price has been moving the last two, three weeks, especially in February, um, I need to go back and start back switching back to the higher time frames, and um, just seeing where price action is going, seeing where the candles are closed and see what kind of, um, Candlestick formation patterns are setting up and then, you know, potentially have a better success rate for March. But GU, looking at this area right here to see where price, what price action wants to do in this area. Um, if it comes and sets up, like at one to two weeks, especially on a four hour time frame, one to two weeks, rejecting this zone right here. I'm getting that to the downside. Uh, AU, <clears throat> AU, I managed to catch a big ass trade off AU last week. Um, I think it was this one right here. Called the bottom from down here, rolling to the highs. Um, I got into this trade right here, back in over here, this buyer right here. I was in profit. TP1 was back over here. That joint melted on me. Almost, <clears throat> can't say that on the air. But uh, <clears throat> price came back and uh, profit for me for like nine pips. Shut it all down and ended up smacking my final TP. But I didn't care because I didn't lose no bread. So it's all Gucci. Um, based off the um, analysis, weekly is bullish. Uh, big bullish. Just created a new high. Don't let the new higher low throw you off because it may be very aggressive. Uh, created a break of structure, no shift of structure just yet. Um, based off the high time frames, uh, we were bearish here. 
we just broke the structure. We need a retest now, finding support um, somewhere up in these zones. This right here, it's gonna be kind of difficult to try to identify where, which one of these lows is gonna be the strong enough support to hold up price action. This area right here is the first area I'm looking forward to hold up price action. Something like this, you know, come down, shift the structure and then get up out of that thing. I don't think it'll uh, liquidity grab anymore. I think once you get this low right here, this kind of this 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 second play is usually what what fuck people up because you know you got the high low lower high lower low, but then it actually come back and break structure this way, then respects and get active to the top side. So let me looking for some type of play like this around this zone right here to get active back to the top side, or it just could open up and continue bullishly and just keep pushing, and then you have to adjust that way too. Um, <clears throat> 4 H levels are ugly to identify with, uh, which to be a key level. Um, like I said, all these wicks, all these close um, uh, push, pullback, push, pullback, push, pullback zones. It makes it hard to identify which level is going to be the strongest there for you. So, you know, take it how you see it. Uh, Mr. Daily note, which is daily is bullish current in a push phase. Could look for a retest of area most recently broken. Uh, I usually have that mark. Mm, I'm going to go with this one right here. It was recently broken. Somewhere up in here. Let's go out to the daily and see what we can see. <clears throat> like this. So um, as far as the area most recently broken, you got a high, low, lower, high, lower, low. Came back and retest this area. Uh, gave you an equal low. And then price action pushed nastily up to the highs. So... Um, I would call the area most recently broken between 72883 and 72750. <clears throat> 750. I can be tripping, bro. Come out nowhere to go. 750. You know what movie that is. Tell me what movie it come out for. I seen your hundred dollars. 750. Uh Mr. Um, So right here, this would be my area most recently broken. I can look for a play from right there. If that level gets smashed, um, price action pushed up bullishly, exhausted a little bit, and then got back active and broke through that level from here. So this is where I was originally looking from. This is the area most recently broken. <clears throat> so you could take it from the white box or from the black box down below. Let's go back to the forage so we can see a little bit better. Uh, come on. Play nice. One more, one more daily note when I... Weekly, okay. All right. Here we go. Man, why is it always spreading that? I'm closer. I'm getting the picture. All right, cool. So, if price action melts and starts to blow through all these wicks, you know, just be okay knowing that the previous higher low on the four hour time frame is way down here that pushed you into the high. So this is okay for you to break. There's no need to try to start changing um, the bias of price action being bullish because obviously you can see we big bullish. Um, <clears throat> big bullish all the way from back over here, which is January 22. That's, oh, that's January 28th of this year. Okay, so January 28th, we've been bullish every since January 28th. It's now March 6th. So price action been doing its thing on to the upside. <clears throat> um, yeah. That's pretty much it for AU. Retest um, the white line or we test this black box area right down here. Um, switch over to Euro JPY. Euro JPY had a mean as um, sell off last week. So one of my zones that I had marked up, um, it was pretty. I just did a compare and contrast video on two. Uh, all you gotta do is go back to my page. I trade the Asian and you'll see um, how I had that marked up. Um, but based off of this weekend's analysis, uh, the weekly is bearish. Could expect a retrace slash lower high to retest the new low created, basically meaning um, same thing pretty much on all the charts, looking for price action to pull back and respect the zone either here or there, and then get back active to retest the lows here. Um, daily is bearish, lower lows and lower highs, currently creating a new low right down here. 4 H is bearish currently only had a high and a new low, which is right here to right here. Um, definitely wait to see if 50% retest is the play or um, structure most recently broken. 50% uh, of this impulse move here is the play, which is this black box outlined here. 
uh, around 126.923 and 127.100, or if we actually push and manipulate through that zone and come back to the area most recently broken, structure most recently broken. So that'll be the play for Euro JPY. Why? 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 Um, you can't, I ain't got a clue of how to mark this right here, bro. You can't is all over the place. Um, one of the previous analysis I did a couple of weeks ago, I was saying um, I saw or I identified that price action was in this area of consolidation right here. Um, so typically um, what I was looking for was a manipulation of the highs or manipulation of the lows, um, grab the liquidity from this range here and then melt or you know grab liquidity from down here, respect and support, and then push to the upside. Um, what we've seen so far is price pushed to the top potentially grab liquidity, but it didn't melt as smoothly as I would like it to, as smoothly as I would like to see it do. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, what's going on in the world and then Canada being one of them oil producers. So I think it's a tug of war right now because the dollar being a safe haven is shooting up uh, Canadian, uh, uh, Canada, Canada, um, oil prices going through the roof. So Canada dollars is going up and, and getting stupid high. So, uh, I think that's why this is playing out the way it is. But for the most part, if you zoom out to the weekly, I don't have any notes on this because I didn't have a clue of you know what the mark and what the, uh, what what a, a great psychology on this price section would be. I think for UCAD, this will be something you definitely have to watch on a daily basis. You definitely have to see um, at what times of the day, which markets the price moves the best. Because right now, all I could identify was we trending in the upwards channel. Um, when you drop down to the daily, it looks a little bit better. Um, trending in the upwards channel, we got the previous higher low that gave you the new high. Um, price action pulled back, respecting this um, higher low area, um, but did not produce a new high. So if price action comes back down, and uh, smash through this zone. If it doesn't uh, hold up here and then start to push back bullishly, I don't really have a clue of what it's gonna do. But what I do see is an area, um, like a little SR flip right here in the white type deal going on. So as far as wanting to trade this, I probably wouldn't just cause mentally it ain't really making a whole lot of sense outside of the bullish channel pushing up. And then what I would like to see is if this bullish channel truly is in play, what I like to see is for, you know, price was here, it pushed up, reached the top, came all the way back to the bottom. Once it hits the bottom of this channel, the way I trade channels, I want to see it push all the way back to the top. Same way it did over here. It hit the bottom, we go to the top. We go from the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top. That's how I read my channel plays. And once it starts fizzing out like this right here in the middle, not really reaching the top, um, right here, not really reaching the bottom, it's like, mm, you risk it, boss. You run into a risky situation. Market is about to open up in 46 minutes. Um, uh, let's see. This is the daily. Let's hit that 4 H. If you really, 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 really want to trade, you can. Um, taking it from down here, where we hit the bottom of the channel. We got low. We got a high, higher low, higher high consolidation. Uh, equal lows, higher high. Um, breaker structure. Retest, shift of structure uh, with a new breaker structure or a retest or a previous low high. So potentially, if you see price action starting to melt and we break this low, then we potentially could just be coming back and touch the bottom of this trend or this channel and then shoot back higher. Or, you know, if price action comes up open bullishly, uh, I would look forward to retest the high, kind of exhaust a little bit and then go all the way back up. But um, that's a big ass range. 2732, that's a, like a 50 pip, 500 pip range, 50 pip. What is that? I can't count, bro. You know, 5,000, something like that. Whatever it is, it's in the fives. The five is in the front, they ain't got some zeros behind it. Um, yeah. Get high, low, lower, high, lower, low. Come back, retest, lower, high. That pushes us down. Um, broke above or manipulated above, retest. Yeah, so I would I would I would stick more with the bullish buys on UCAS simply because I know in the higher time frames we are somewhat channeling up. I wouldn't necessarily chase the shorts. Um you could potentially scalp the shorts, but like I said, if you ain't got some good scout rules to say, okay, I'm out in 10 pips, 20 pips, uh any 
five pip withdrawal or if it, any five pip drawdown amount, you know, then you probably just want to stay away from it and let it um clear itself up. Currently on a one hour time frame, we are in the uptrend. Push, pull back, push, pull back, push, pull back. So now we're looking for that new push, new highs. If that plays out, you know, you can get active that way as well. But that's all I got for this one. Um, I thank you for watching from the bottom of my toes. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you for watching. Um, your support is what's going to uh, motivate me to continue to keep putting this great content out. Um, your support is what's going to continue to tell YouTube to send me some couple of little checks. I ain't got no checks yet because ain't nobody watching my sh. But when they catch on, it's going to catch on hard. And there's going to be so many people like, oh, man, I should have been rocking with you. Yeah, you should have. Now, today's price is not yesterday's price. Today's price is not yesterday's price. You can get active with your boy right now for uh, <clears throat> we running a five-class special. $52.99. That's $52.99. Five one-hour sessions. I'll come over here, show you how to identify these trends, show you how to identify the structures, um, show you how I mark up, um, and then show you how you potentially could get active in these markets. But that's not a hit nor there. Uh, I got a lot of free shit out there. Um, it, the YouTube was University of Pivot. Now is I trade the Asian. Twitter is the same. Insta is the same. Facebook is the same. Telegram is the same. Um, I changed the YouTube from the University of Pivot to I trade the Asian. Um, I don't know. I just like the way I trade the Asian sounded better. That shit was hitting hard one day. I said, you know, I'm going to go to that. I trade the Asian, you know. I like that. And then the University of Pivot is just kind of like my overall thing, like everything that um, so like the stupid pips on Telegram is like a class that you take within the university. The YouTube, I trade the Asian is a class that you watch on YouTube under the whole umbrella of the University of Pippage. So that's a majority of why I changed the name to I trade the Asian, you know, just because the University of Pippage is the broad perspective of everything that falls under that name. So I'll let you boy like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm out. <laughs>